Michael no Novins, and Matthew Pitzer. So you have Miracles, Humans, and Esper Hero on their side. So before we saw Azorius Control kind of struggle against the Dredge deck, but now this is the opposite. This is a matchup that Azorius frequently wants to see because of how powerful the sweepers that it plays are going to be against the Humans cards. So I know when Jeskai was the go-to Colony deck, this was a pretty good matchup. Lightning Bolt, Electrolyze, carrying a lot of weight. Now, Shaheen does not have red cards. Does that make this a closer matchup? So it does make it a bit closer. The Planeswalkers are going to be clunkier. They're harder to defend against a huge thing of Planeswalkers, or of creatures, rather, right? But uh, on the other side of things, this deck is playing more what we call hammers. These are things that are just, if you draw them, they are able to put the game away by themselves. Michael is on a six-card hand here, but he is on the play with a turn one Aether Vial. So he'll have plenty of mana available this game. The question is whether he has the threats. And it looks like Champion of the Parish and no second land. It's normally a concern, but if he has Aether Vial, this might even be a good thing. Right. Aether Vial is so strong here against the Azorius deck. And from Shaheen, I like what I see. If you look at the grip here, it's not one but two copies of Supreme Verdict already in the hand. So that could end up being awkward if Madsen were to say meddling mage Supreme Verdict. We see a lot of these control decks kind of diversifying their sweepers with things that are frequently the same thing, functionally speaking, Supreme Verdict versus Wrath of God or Day of Judgment, for example. But when they do literally have the same name, that can be a liability against exactly what Novins has brought to the table today. Vial ticks up to two. There is a meddling mage in Michael's hand. Now, looking at the removal that Shaheen has brought, three copies of the Supreme Verdict. He has one Detention Sphere, one copy of Oust, and four copies of Path to Exile, along with three Cryptic Commands that can work to remove something in a pinch. Right, right. That's something where you'll see something to the effect of, end of your turn, try to, say, return Meddling Mage to Novin's hand, draw a card, untap, slam Supreme Verdict. This is interesting. Michael taps the Aether Vial. In response, Shaheen will opt. Right, and the big reason for this is there are just a few things that Novins could put in that could disrupt this opt, even if it isn't necessarily a meddling mage on opt. Something like Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, right. would make it cost two mana. Yeah, that's got to be the play, right? Because I don't, I don't think Michael's going to meddling mage opt. Pretty aggressive play. Right. But Thalia, absolutely. Another thing that Sarani could be interested in trying to do here is if he has a Path to Exile in his hand, he may be interested in trying to Path to Exile this Champion of the Parish so Novins doesn't have the opportunity to Phantasmal image it and get very aggressive. Sheen looks at the hand. It's got a basic eye, Plains, using snow-covered lands today. Gets another one here. Looks like he has a Teferi in hand, as well as those two Supreme Verdicts, and a Force of Negation. That's a two of in his main deck today. It's going to be pretty rough against humans, but it looks like Novins has another copy of Aether Vial in his hand, and it's also going to play well yeah. with just returning this Aether Vial to hand. Well, we're certainly not meddling Maging Opt now. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Kite Sail Freebooter. We see the hand. It's going to be, well, it's Azorius. It's going to be all non-creature spells. Two copies of Supreme Verdict. Land number three and four. Force Negation, Teferi, and Timely Reinforcements was the last card. And the reason we see Sarani choosing to grab this basic island from before is if we look at that Field of Ruin in hand, Sarani was likely planning to spend his next turn destroying this unclaimed territory with Field of Ruin to turn that into a Plains and then have another basic Plains right. in hand a verdict. Yeah, that would be the question because you're right, he doesn't have double white here despite fetching, despite having four lands. Right, and that's just him saying, you know, I'll take a turn off like that and take a couple extra points of damage if it means I don't have to pay two life for my lands as well. Timothy takes the Teferi, then casts another Aether Vial. Now this is set up for Timothy to get that Meddling Mage down on Supreme Verdict before Shaheen can answer it. Right, and this is the spot where you'll see these humans decks sort of build a house of cards mm -hmm. where they play the Freebooter, which takes one card, and then Meddling Mage names a two of in the deck, or two of in the hand, and so on. Now this is really interesting. Field of Ruin from Shaheen, his draw for the turn was Cryptic Command. So which basic he gets here actually matters. It looks like it's going to be the Plains. Right, and this is the spot where if that island last turn had been a Hallowed Fountain, Shaheen could get an island here and his entire hand would be turned on next turn. Right. As it is, he doesn't have triple blue for the command. 
And you have to think Michael's turn is going to be getting that meddling mage down on Supreme Verdict. Right. This is the spot where Shaheen in particular wants to make sure that he does this in a spot where Novins can't respond to whatever he does with his lands in order to say, all right, you crack a fetch land, respond vile in this name, your Supreme Verdict. So Novins we go. Moves one of the vials up to two, leaves the, up to one, leaves the other one on two. That meddling mage. Yeah, and it is there. See, Meddling Mage, Mantis Rider, both in hand. And this is a spot where another reason that Sarani could want to do this at sorcery speed is just to kind of threaten a path to exile and take one less damage from Champion of the Parish if Novins wants to do it on Sarani's upkeep instead. Champion of the Parish, Vialed in. Meddling Mage, Vialed in. That's going to name Supreme Verdict. And, and this is Novins saying, you don't have a path. Yeah. Show me. I don't believe you. If he does have a path, you know, all right, fair enough. The swing in is for five. Shaheen down to 12. And Michael's going to pass the test. There is no Supreme Verdict there. And a draw to Fairy from Shaheen. A, a good card, but not going to be able to do much here. No, here we're just going to likely see something like timely reinforcements in order to try and buy some time. Yeah, it seems like the play is from Shaheen. If he can have timely reinforcements, and then next turn, chump block for the Teferi. Maybe he can set up a spot where he, Teferi bounces Meddling Mage and he casts Supreme Verdict. Right, exactly. It's a lot of work, though. And timely reinforcements will be the play. That'll put Shaheen back up to 18. Give him a trio of 1-1s. One and the nice thing about these 1-1s one -ones as well is they're going to buy even more time just being thrown under the proverbial champion of the parish bus. Shaheen getting to put his own token yeah, onto the battlefield. That's, so good. that's just a flavor win. You got to feel good. You love to see yeah. it. Both vials to two for Michael. Three blockers, Shaheen at 18. And here Madsen's just trying to weigh how aggressive he wants to be. There's a point where if you say alpha with everything, then Serana could just double block meddling mage or triple block it to play around Thalia's lieutenant and then verdict the following turn and Novins is out of the game. But if you give Serrani too much time, then you know answering this metal mage, meddling mage kind of just pulls the bottom out of that house of cards I was talking about before. And it's going to be a full attack. So this gives Shaheen this the opportunity to triple block Meddling Mage. This is very aggressive. Two cards in hand. They would have to both be Thalia's lieutenant. If you're in Sarani's spot, so there's a problem with these kinds of bluffs where if it's two Thalia's lieutenants, Sarani's probably dead anyway. Right, you can't bluff. If you bluff something that's too strong, your opponent has to call it. Exactly. You just have to go, well, yeah, I mean, if you have that, I I'm dead, so show me and just triple block the meddling mage. Yeah, on the surface, that looks like the right play. So the trade-off is if instead of being a Thalia's lieutenant, it's another meddling mage. That makes sense. That's worth so much damage. Yeah. You're going to triple block the mage, and there's another mage in Michael's hand. That seems the most likely to me. Either way, Shaheen's going to call. Triple blocks the meddling mage. Taking seven. Thalia's yeah. lieutenant would make it ten. Phantasmal image would make yeah. it nine. Yeah, and it, unless, he has t unless he has two of those, I just don't oh, feel like he can do that. lieutenant makes it twelve, excuse me. Right, because that's, that's accepting that you're going to get swept. Exactly. So, triple block. It's a double lieutenant or mage from Michael. He's thinking awfully hard about this one. Yeah, this seems like a spot where 
it may have been unexpected for, to, for the triple block to happen. You think he just he mis, might have miscalculated here? Yeah, it's possible that that was the case. You expected chump blocks on champion of the parish or something to that effect. Yeah, Shaheen drops to 11. And yeah, he lets Shaheen untap. I think that's a misstep. And Shaheen, is he going to try to clean up here? So you have the <laughs> there's the last opt. Oof. That's the best way to play around meddling mage. Cast all four before there's a meddling mage naming the card. This was a risky play here by Shaheen. If he doesn't hit the land, he will not be able to cast Supreme Verdict. Still has Teferi in play, worst case scenario. Right, his thought here is likely just that even if he missed, he knows there's not a Phantasmal image or another meddling mage or Novins would have just played it. Right. So he could just say Teferi minus on the bigger champion of the parish and then chump block the other one and just buy another turn that way. And making land drops is just so important at this point. Car in the bottom draws a Snapcaster Mage, so he will not have Verdict Mana. Instead, it is Teferi, Time Raveler. Puts the Champion of the Parish back into Michael's hand, draws a card, and still no land. Shaheen has to pass. And see, that was kind of the risk with even casting the Opt in the first place is now he couldn't cast the Verdict. This is not a bad spot to be in. Right. But I do also want to highlight his sort of sign of patience here where... He did not bottom snap Caster Mage, knowing it's one of the better cards in the matchup, because he knew if he bottomed that and drew an, a worse card, then he just right. bricks off a lot of his turn. Michael now deciding if he has which creatures, if any, he'd like to put in on Shaheen Zen stuff. Shaheen's still at a relatively healthy 11 life points. Now does have a Teferi in, on the battlefield that may need to be answered. Yeah, and, you know, now Novitz is in an awful squeeze where he needs to put enough creatures on the battlefield to actually pressure Sarani. And now we see the, the play from Michael. It is Mantis Rider and Thalia's lieutenant. This is a lot of damage. Yeah, this is, this is a lot coming in. So this is at least a total of seven points. Well, it's six in the air. And then the, and then the lieutenant, lieutenant is seven. Right. Agreed. It's pretty close here. It's 11 power total for Michael, so a full swing means that Shaheen must block. Michael might even be able to send the Thalia's lieutenant at Teferi, kind of daring Shaheen to take 10. I don't think Shaheen would in the situation. No. Then at that point, if Novins just activates a vial, then... Sarani dies if a human gets put in. So we see whether it's six or seven going at Shaheen. Looks like all seven was, so Teferi will get to stick around. Oh, oh, and now Sarani gets I, to instant I don't like speed that. supreme verdict. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I thought maybe showing some inexperience playing in specifically the card Teferi Time Raveler. Sometimes you think at one there's not much damage that can be done, but it does feel like in that situation Michael should have sent one extra point at it. Right. All of a sudden the Supreme Verdict is able to happen mid-combat step. What a nightmare. Right. Without Teferi, Sheen would have to Verdict there and then if there was anything on the end step with the Aether Vials, maybe Shaheen's dead. Right. There's, a, there's certainly a spot where if he were able to, say, draw a Mantis Rider off the top. Yeah, that Things would do get it. get hairy. See if Michael can find a way. That's actually a reason it may have been slightly better to just play the other champion of the Parish last turn if he was going to send everything at the face, because that way a top deck Mantis Rider would be lethal. Attack, and now here is Supreme Verdict. So Shaheen cleans up the creatures, gets that Teferi back from under the Freebooter. One, two, three, four creatures in the graveyard for Michael. And this is what I was talking about, about playing with hammers, where right. all of a sudden it felt close, and now it does not feel close anymore. Militia Bugler from Michael, hoping to rebuild, but even that misses. And even if it had hit, I don't feel like that would be much better. No, and, you know, 
think of it this way. Militia Bugler just looted four times. Right. Now Sheen's about to untap with a hand of another Supreme Verdict, a Snapcaster Mage, a Cryptic Command. And a Timely Reinforcements. And a Timely Reinforcements. That's so hard to beat. Oh, does Teferi let you cast Flashback Timely Reinforcements and Instant Speed with Snapcaster Mage? Yeah, so let's can check. Let's basically check. can Shaheen go Snapcaster Mage, Chump Block, Militia Bugler, end of your turn, timely reinforcements when there isn't a creature left on the battlefield in order to go back to ten and get the three tokens. Plus one is that until your next turn you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. So that Snapcaster giving it flashback. It sounds like we can get timely reinforcements at any point now. That is an oof from me. Now, you can only cast spells when it could be a sorcery. That does not deal with Aether Vials. Aether Vial is a messed up magic card. That just puts the creatures onto the battlefield. No response. No casting. No counter spells. You don't even get to see what it is before it's on the table. Not really. Sometimes that's when you saw plays where, like, that opt uh, early on in the game or said he just didn't want the vial to maybe be t uh, Thalia. Correct. Cryptic Command from Shaheen. Bounce and draw on Aether Vial. That was on Michael's end stop. That was, looks like an end step cryptic command there to bounce the vial. So now we're on Shaheen's turn. Right, and this is Sarani. He just wants to try and get some value out of this force of negation. And the twos are the most disruptive creatures historically out of the human's deck. Now Shaheen puts the other Aether Vial back in Michael's hand with the help of Teferi, Time Raveler, and makes room for the bigger of the Teferis. This is Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. He's done the hero thing. And that's going to tuck away Militia Bugler. Maybe. Setting your opponent up to draw a draw two later on has got to feel so bad when your opponent's on blue-white with a grip. Yeah, I mean, right, it's really just saying if you survive till that turn, she, you just don't care. Right, exactly. And if you look at Sheen's hand, I, it makes sense why. Two Snapcaster Mages. Actually, three Snapcaster Mages. Cryptic Command, another Supreme Verdict. A lot to like here. Ooh, Unsettled Mariner. So Unsettled Mariner, a one of in humans. Looks like Novins is playing it over the fourth copy of Thalia here. A 2-2 two -two changeling, whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless its controller pays one. So you see there's that extra mana to Fairy Time Raveler, putting the Mariner back into Michael's hand. And Shaheen still now full seven cards, untaps with Cryptic Command mana up, discards Surgical Extraction to hand size. This game is getting further and further from competitive. Yeah, Shaheen with the Cryptic Snapcasters, two Planeswalkers in play, has what looks to... Have a, be a stable board. Yeah, at this point, it's it's a spot where the life totals are very far apart from one another, but it also just doesn't feel like Shaheen is at risk of losing the game anytime soon. Wondering for the damage source for the Azorius deck. If it comes down, the opponent wants to see you end the game. You have two Celestial Colonnades and those four copies of Snapcaster Mage. Hey, Teferi can tuck himself. You can to loop to fairies and get their deck. That is true as well. Updates over on the standard match between Corey Bomeister and Matthew Pitzer. They're going to game three. It's John Dinosaurs and Esper Hero. Both this and Legacy, though, are still in the first game. And that's just two blue-white decks. 
Yeah. Or two matches with blue-white decks. And Miracles from Madsen. Azorius from Shaheen. The Mariner's back into play. It's only because Shaheen doesn't feel threatened by it. Willed it so. Yeah. What are your feelings on a third Planeswalker entering the battlefield? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> might as well. I think sometimes your biggest win condition with Azorius is to demoralize your opponent. And a third Planeswalker seems to go pretty a good ways toward that. Ooh, we see Sarani pathing the turn before the Militia Beagler is drawn. Well, there we go. Glad we dodged that bullet. Who knows what would have happened if Michael had drawn Militia Bugler. He'd have to use this Logic Knot, or maybe this Cryptic, or maybe a Snapcaster Mage. I don't know. It would have been tough. It's a hard life for the Blue-White Mage. Vile. Going to be a hard cast force of negation. So uh, also known as neg cancel. Neg or <laughs> negate. <laughs> Kite Sail Freebooter. Michael's going to try a variety of cards in his hand to see if any of them resolve. And see, I like that. <laughs> what I like about that, it was maximizing the demoralizing part. Is instead of logic nodding the Freebooter, you say, here are the cards I have in my hand. Which would oh. you like to take? Sarani knew what he was doing. He, he f specifically thumbed the logic knot to the top and then fanned his hand out and said, you would know you what? Would you like to try to beat these? Balls in your court, champ. Yeah. Pick. Michael picks the other option, which is to shuffle the deck. So Shaheen takes game one after a close, stabilizing on four life. And for Shaheen, a lot of his best cards in this matchup are already in the main deck. When you look at the cards he has in his sideboard, there, actually, there isn't much he can add. Yeah, you could maybe be looking at something like Lyra Dawnbringer that's good at buying you a little bit more time. Wrath of God, Timely Reinforcements. These are all things that are going to be good against creature decks. But other than that, that's all you're really going to be seeing come in. He's going to be cutting some things to the effect of, let's say, Force of Negation, which we saw have a text box on turn 100 there. But other than that, it didn't do a whole lot. His counter spells in general are just going to be weaker against an Aether Vile Cavern of Souls deck. Yeah. So Lyra maybe comes in because of that reason, but not because it's particularly good here. Right. It's a fine card because Novins doesn't really have any ways to interact. And Lyra, as long as there's not an unchecked champion of the Parish, Lyra's pretty good at owning the creature battlefield, right? But honestly, Sarani's not looking to change too much of the formula. For Michael Novins, he has another copy of Unsettled Mariner. He has Oriac Champion, Gaddic Teague, Plague Engineer, Deputy of Detention. Collector Oof, Graft Digger's Cage, and Dismember. So the big thing here is Gaddic Teague. That's going to serve as extra copies of Meddling Mage against things like Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God the important cards without things like Lightning Bolt, Electrolyze, or Lightning Helix in Sarani's deck, there aren't really as many ways to check those types of effects. Your Path to Exiles are already taxed, and that's a good way to tax them even further. You could make a case for something like Deputy of Detention because it's good at answering Planeswalkers, and Unsettled Mariner is something else that you could be interested in bringing in just because it plays on its own and hurts Path to Exile, and it also hurts the interactive abilities from the Planeswalkers that Sir Har Sarani's bringing to the table. Yeah. But really, there's just not that much here for the control decks. A lot of times when you play humans, you kind of go, all right, if I play against sweepers, then I play against sweepers and I'm going to lose. Sheen's deck is one of the few decks that actually plays real sweepers in it. Exactly. A lot of the things that we see out of Novin's sideboard are kind of fine-tuning to beat up on the other matchups that are a bit closer. Your artifact decks, your tribal creature decks, and so on. So the creature collection from Star City Games different creatures on playmats and sleeves. They are 
The newest addition of the Creature Collection for the month of July is Down Undead. It's our koala, and it's also a zombie. You can get this now at StarCityGames.com slash Creature Collection. I just really like how cute the little one is. Honestly. The little koala? Just little. Yeah. I, I got it. I, I like cute animals. I'm a simple woman. I see a big-eyed cartoon animal. I, I squeal and get happy chemicals in my brain. I see our standard modern legacy here. <laughs> legacy still on game one. Modern starting game two. Standard almost done with the match. Hey, looks like we have about 22 minutes till <laughs> they finish up their first game over there. This weekend with uh, Legacy, we've seen a lot of Ren and Six decks in the room, and that has slowed down the format a bunch. How do you feel about Sarani's counter spells with this start from humans? That's going to make them pretty bad. We see Cavern of Souls <laughs> and Aether Vial. You know, if he's left Force of Negation in, he can counter the second Aether Vial. Odds are it's not there. That's, yep. Unsettled Mariner from Michael Novins. And Stony Silence from Shaheen. In response, we'll see Noble Hierarch filed in. Is this just a case of not in a lot of uh, too many bad cards in the main, so this comes in? So a lot of it is just that the games that Humans has active Aether Files against Stony Silence versus the games that it doesn't are just kind of night and day. Right, where they have all, everything all of a sudden has flash and is uncounterable and you can't really figure out how you're supposed to bob and weave through them are so much more difficult than others. And if, you're, if your counter spells kind of stink anyway, you have a lot of cards you want to take out, it's, it's kind of free to bring in the one stony silence here. Narset, part of Avails from Shaheen, minus two. And so Narset's a card that at first you kind of think, well, they're not trying to draw cards. Why would right. I care that much about it? But when you're playing with super powerful effects like all of these Wraths, she plays splendidly in the curve of turn three Narset, turn four Wrath, kind of enabling you or increasing the odds that you have that Wrath of God effect on the fourth turn. Right. This isn't really a hate card here. It's just a card draw spell. Exactly. Uh, she finds Path to Exile with it, which will be good on the following turn. This is some, it's usually going to be pretty close to healing salve where you're just gaining three life and drawing a card. Do you think Michael still attacks it down? You probably have to because it's so much worse if it just stays in the on the battlefield. That's going to be it. Yeah, another Mantis Rider. So five upstairs, three at Narset. Sheen's down to ten. And I believe Athalia's lieutenant in Michael's hand presents lethal next turn. All right. Let's see if Shane has the Wrath. He doesn't. He's tapping for Ops. He doesn't. Maybe he has the Wrath, but he doesn't have the white mana. Either way, no Wrath coming here. He finds timely reinforcements, though. Not so hot against multiple Mantis Riders. No, it might buy him a turn. Right. Gonna have to do some counting. Flooded Strand and Field of Ruin in his hand. He's gonna go for timely reinforcements. So Shaheen's back up to 16 gets three one ones, but they don't block very well. So the game here is likely just trying to gang up on this unsettled Mariner. That way he can make this path to exile in his hand a little better. That card is so much worse at two mana than it is at one mana. It's much harder to say path, snapcaster, right. path. That's a, now that's a six mana play? Instead of a four mana, exactly. I suppose five mana if you spend the first path on the Mariner. Right then that right. does not feel very good when you have yeah. all these ways to block Mariner naturally. And Michael's going to keep the disruption coming with Kite Sail Freebooter. Spell Snare. Path to Exile, two lands. And now we see what Shaheen's setting up for. The copy of Lyra Dawn. Lyra locks this battlefield up nicely. Yeah, it's really all in on that card. That's Shaheen's next play. Crack Flooded Strand to make Lyra. Well, Hope it's good enough. All in is the way that this Azorius deck tends to play a good chunk of the time. These are those situations where, the, where you're leaning on your hammers. You're saying, all right, I know these cards are good, and I'm going to play as if they're good. So, Thalia's Lieutenant. 1-1 one, one counters brought to all the creatures. We see eight damage in the air. 
along with the possibility of four more on the ground. And Michael just going to swing in the air. So he gets Shaheen down to eight. That's yeah. actually a healthy number. Yeah, and all the it's it's rough for Novins just because the attacks on the ground are not good, right? You either have to get your mare in a triple block, which doesn't feel good, and if you only attack with Noble, you trade it for a one one. Yeah. I feel like maybe Mariner getting triple blocked is okay here, but either way, he's got Sheen down to eight, and now he has to answer Lyra. And if Novins didn't leave Reflector Mage in, or if he can't find something like Deputy Detention, this is just going to dominate the battlefield by itself. It buys Sarani so much time. And that's if it can't ever right. find a way to start attacking. So what does Michael need? He needs a Deputy of Detention, Reflector Mage, two more Thalia's Lieutenants, or yeah. maybe uh, Phantasmal Images. <gasps> well, okay, let's get it started. Here's one. Okay. And you also at some point need to see if this is enough damage. This is kind of what I was saying when I was looking at that triple block last turn if Michael can actually shove through the Lyra. So at this point, if you attack with the Mantis Riders and the Kite Sail Freebooter in the air, Lyra blocks one Mantis Rider, cancels out the other one, and then Sarani takes three. So this is unlikely to be quite enough when Sarani still has three blockers on the ground. Right. But if Novins can find another image or another Thalia's Lieutenant, then those Mantis Riders all of a sudden are bigger than Lyra. And if she's chump blocking, that is much worse. Yeah, one more image or lieutenant would certainly do it here. But the whole game is hanging on a thread right now. Sarani can just find, say, a supreme verdict. Yeah, and that'll do it, too. He has his own top decks. This is a close game. This is really yeah. interesting. With another land, Shaheen also can activate Colonnade as a blocker, which I means a chump blocker, but sure. it's a blocker. And there's even a point where if Sarani can activate Celestial Colonnade, that's the space where Colonnade chump blocks a Mantis Rider, Lyra then blocks a Freebooter, which gets back the path to exile, and then he can tap the Colonnade to try and path something. Right. He'd which, still need one more, an additional land because of the Mariner, but he can oh, build right, toward right, right. that. I mean, that's only one more turn in the future. It's very reasonable. True. Michael, checking if he has lethal. We believe that he does not, but I do like this. Oh, okay. this is a good attack. So an attack with Exalted with a Mantis Rider. That's a 6-6 six, six flyer. That can get by the Lyra. This is the best attack for sure. Right, right. No, this is this is a great attack from Novins. Yeah, and Shaheen just has to go down to two. Yeah, you can't lose the Lyra. Then you're in a top deck Supreme Verdict or lose the game mode. So, back to Sarani we go. Draws a fetch land. That's no help. Plays Field of Ruin. Looks like there was a life total adjustment here. Shaheen down is actually at one. Can confirm this is now correct. It's hard to see him surviving this attack. Before, when Sarani was at 8, then getting through a relevant amount of life is difficult. But now, Novins just needs one or two more creatures than Sarani, and he happens to have three more creatures. And a big swing out. Here is Colonnade. So we see Lyra gets to jump in front of a Mantis Rider. I'm not sure this is there. Let's see. Michael has count. Michael has counted this one out. So this is a spot where yeah. the Colonnade's going to have to go in front of the Mantis Rider, and then the Phantasmal Image and the Freebooter are the only things that go unblocked. Five blockers, seven attackers. Two things go unblocked. 
looks like Mariner and Mantis Rider. So five damage, nine damage coming in. That can't be right. We'll see how this works out. This way, four damage coming in. And Shaheen still he take, can't take four. He has to, he can take no more than three. Correct. So if the if the colonnade goes in front of the Mantis Rider and then the he, Freebooter gets shot down. Right. The two creatures he lets through, if he can only take three, the two creatures it, he lets through have well, to be it's, Image it's, and Noble. Right, right. There's no other way to survive the attack. Well... Right. So now Lyra would put Sarani up to six, and you take. Oh, so you can take free five. Booter. Right, right. Okay, so, so you can take five. Right. So now you take the freebooter and the image, and go down okay. to two. That makes sense. That's what he's gonna do. Lyra gains the life. Mantis Rider down. Shaheen loses most of his things, including the colonnade. No one's had a Thalia? And okay. Thalia. Okay. That's... Well. Sheen does have a fetch land in his hand and is at two, so if he draws a Supreme Verdict, he will be able to cast it even through the Thalia. Spell Snare. Yeah. Because that was lethal still through the Thalia, well, it's not going to matter. Shaheen takes the game. And that means their team will run down where the matches are at. Corey Bowmeister finishes the entire standard match. 2-1 winner again with Jun Dinosaurs. Now, a win from Sheen there would have won the match for his team. It didn't happen. They're going to game three. We are going to move over while they sideboard to the legacy match between Timothy Madsen and Pete Ingram. Pete is up a game in the matchup. The old 35-minute game won. Tail is Normally, time. Miracles wins those. Look. Pete Ingram is a powerful slinger of cardboard. So, looking at the two decks Ashiok here. Ashiok Dream yeah. Ranger. That's going to be pretty good against Ren and Six trying to rebuy <laughs> fetch lands. So, that's certainly going to help. That's out of the sideboard of Timothy. Ashiok, you can't search libraries, and it repeatedly exiles graveyards. I'm, there's also a point where if you're planning to play 35-minute games... Exile with 20 you. cards yeah. is not nothing. You see Ren and Six has already hit the graveyard. We see a Winter Orb hiding out in Ingram's hand. If he can establish some sort of threat with that card, that's going to be huge. You see in this matchup, Ingram with Wasteland in hand. That's not going to help against Miracles. That's a deck loaded up on basics. But League of Old, Emissary of Trust is the play. And no answer at the ready in Timothy's hand. Looks like the best answer that Madsen has to this card is just a Teferi, and that does not feel good. That's rough, right? So then Peter will draw a ton of cards here. Well, luckily, the Leovold's no longer on the battlefield when Teferi tries to draw a card. So, instead, both players might draw a card. <laughs> right, yeah. So, Pete still gets the card for it being targeted. Right. So, Teferi going to bounce Leovold. Target. Shaheen draws. And then because Teferi Leovold's gone, Mike Timothy gets to resolve his ability. He gets to draw. And passes. Not using the minus one of Ashiok here. So leaving the planes up here may have been a mistake since that Leovold's going to come back down next turn. Obviously, you want to cast something like Swords to Plowshares, given the opportunity. Okay. But if you draw, say, a Ponder off of that, you just might not get to cast your Ponder. mana here from Pete. See Dreadhord Arcanist. A two of in his deck. And Tarmogoyf. So two creatures on the board here. Back to Timothy we go. 
He does have Terminus in his hand. Needs to build up to six mana before doing that. But you see Brainstorm in hand. So that will put it back on top of his deck. It's not too bad. If Novins can find another land, he has a Snapcaster. So if he can Brainstorm back the Terminus and okay. then Snapcaster Brainstorm Miracle Terminus. You can do it all. Right. If he can, it feels like something he'd be pretty interested in doing here. Checks, he has already used Teferi. Ashiok minus one targets Pete, which means he, mill he puts the top four cards into the graveyard, then exiles it. Those are some hits. Those are some good cards. <laughs> Looks like Timothy going to try to set up that Terminus. We'll start with the Brainstorm from hand. Or rather, actually he changed his mind. Monastery Mentor. So this line, very different, because this one means he doesn't really want to cast Terminus anymore. Right. Now he actually just gets to create some blockers for these creatures. He can, If he Brainstorms, put the Monastery Mentor in front of the Dreadhorde Arcanist. And right. then also gets to just put the fresh token in front of the Tarmogoyf. And this is why we saw the uh, Ashiok get used here as well, because he didn't want Dreadhorde Arcanist going to work at all. So now no targets in Pete's graveyard. And in this matchup, even though Four Color Delver oftentimes has cards like Lightning Bolt, it's not always the matchup where bolts are left in. Right. It, you know, sometimes they're good to basically do Lava Spike impressions, but if you don't think your opponent's going to have Monastery Mentors, then the card can be a bit of a liability when you're getting into, say, Counterspell Wars. In response to the Leovold, Brainstorm from Timothy. Finds two more lands and a Swords to Plowshares. Makes a Monk token. Just instant and land in the graveyard. So Tarmogoyf, a 2-3. That's another means... big benefit of the Ashiok Minus. Pete makes Winter Orb. And now the game's going to look very different. Ooh, but what if Madsen put that Terminus on top? Does he even cast it yet? Absolutely. All right. That's what I'll do. All of a sudden, there's a Winter Orb in play, and you have oh, two Oh, no. Walkers. Yeah, this is really <laughs> big. I love everything. Make the token. <laughs> well, you know, if Ingram counters it. And now it's gone. And Pete may have been get done in by his own Winter Orb here. As Teferi continues to plus. He can only untap one land. It's going to take him a long time to rebuild. We see him now find his third wasteland. And Delver of Secrets. That's a that's at least a creature here. Right. It's not bad. Timothy does, I believe, have it covered with swords to plowshares. That's what he'll do. Delver's gone. Players, yeah, go checks the Ashiok. Making sure that Madsen's still able to search his library. Yeah, spells and abilities, your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. Starts to plowshares, so he just gains life. If it was Path to Exile, Pete would get the land. If it wasn't worded that way, we see Ashiok with some Leonid Arbiter nonsense. Yeah. Start ghost quartering people to build more wastelands. Yeah, that'd be no fun. Nothing says fun like Teferi Time Raveler. <laughs> Got to see in Legacy earlier, walking tables, some locks with Teferi Time Rammer. Got to see a uh, Caracas Vendillion Click Teferi Narset. Ooh. That one's just a hard lock. Yeah, that's... Yeah, uh... once you get all four in play, they, they can't do anything. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> the old, the classic four-card okay. combo. Yeah. The, just line them up. The combo key cards. He plays one, all four. Mind over matter. Okay. Oh, two. <laughs> to fairy time raveler. 
three intruder alarm. We're going infinite. I don't even know how, but it's happening. Oh, yeah. Someone walks up and says, yeah, I had a hard lock with Teferi, Time Raveler, and, and it, you just go, oh, I'm going to stop you right there. I've heard this one before. Ran in six and play for Pete. I believe there's a seven minute extension on this match. Pete can either try to force Timothy to win this one, or he can try to play for the comeback here in game two. If he does, he might not be able to get game three. Ooh. And now Timothy one ups him. He says, You have your winter orb. Well, how about back to basics? Ah, uh, yes. Fantastic winter orb, my friend. Bounce your winter orb. Their lands don't untap. And Madsen's really turned the corner here. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is getting big. out big. I agree. Before I'm, we were, ah, uh, you know, well, he has a Teferi, but it doesn't have an ultimate, so I guess this is going to go for a while. And now this, it feels like Madsen's got this one pretty close to locked up. Thoughtsies for Peter. He can tap out again for uh, Winter Orb if he'd like, but then he'll never get mana again. It's not really a winning line. Maybe he goes for it. You might just have to try and hope that you can win via Ren and Six or something to that effect. Okay, so how, how does that work? So now that there's a back to basics in play, how does Pete win through this? So the thing that I would have maybe liked to see there is to try and ping something like Ashiok now that you have this winner or resolved. Okay. He can draw some more ma lands. Still can get some mana that way. However, Pete is running out of lands here. Deck plays 10 mana producing, or 11 mana producing dual lands. So, still six more in his deck that he could draw. But that is his only way to make mana at the moment. Now Michael's just slowly untapping his lands and hanging out with his planeswalkers. Not under any pressure. Winter orb still in effect. And Timothy using Snapcaster Mage to start to attack down Ren and Six. Teferi picks up the Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> Fancy. Not even bouncing the Winter Orb. Why would you want to give you? I mean, I guess Pete can just recast it, is the thought. Well, likely can. Right, right. Time management, this is an interesting one. I do think we need to start looking at the damage sources Tim Madsen has. Yeah, this is the spot where you pretty aggressively want to start looking for things like Monastery Mentor. Right, there's still... Well, there's a Monastery Mentor on the bottom of the deck that has now been shuffled back in. So there's still two Monastery Mentors. Right. Uh, three Snapcaster Mage, those are the win conditions. An ultimate of Jace the Mind Sculptor, but it might be a bit slow for that. You see, again, an end step Snapcaster Mage. We see Tundra hiding out in Novin's hand, or excuse me, Madsen's yeah. hand. Kind of a nombo with that back to basics. And remember, this matters for the team of Madsen, Novin's, and Pitzer because Madsen needs to win this game too. Right. If he doesn't, then Pete Ingram wins the match 1-0, and Corey Bollmeister's already won his match. That'll be the end of the round. Correct, and that's the big motivating factor for Ingram to keep playing on here. Even though this is a game he's likely lost, he is up a game in the match, and Madsen does still need to win in time. Uh, 
as soon as Madsen plays something like a Monastery Mentor, we'll likely just see Ingram pick his cards up very quickly. Ponder from Madsen. So looking for that. Terminus, Spell Pierce, doesn't want any of those. Those aren't Monastery Mentor. No, it's Mentors. Probably would take another Snapcaster Mage. The rough thing is that it just dies to Ren in six. And perhaps milling. Minus four, exiles the graveyard away. Madsen passes, Ren in six. Finishes off Ashia. Now Pete can crack these fetches again. There are 12, we count them, 12, mana, 12 lands in the deck. There's four left. Pete will brainstorm. <gasps> and he finds a Pyroblast. That can take care of back to basics. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, and now in Madsen was in a bit of a hurry to find that win con. As a result, he, le he left some openings for Pete to use. Oh my gosh, and he has a volcanic island in his hand as well. Right. So Pete might be able to break the lock here. Well, we will see. Cracks a fetch line, goes to 19. Uh, their time extension has now been added to the round clock. This is the time they have remaining. Oh my gosh. I, we thought this game was locked up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it makes sense. I think it was, but Mazen had to try to win. So he had to unlock the door just a bit. Yeah. Pete is using that to his advantage. Oh, oh, absolutely. Pyroblast takes care of back to basics. Has Timothy left in any Force Ooh. of Wills? He has not. Now, he does play... Actually, that's his... He has two copies of back to basics in the 75, so there might be another one in the hand. And another Red Blast take care of Teferi. He's hoping... But that means there isn't another oh back to basics in Madsen's goodness. hand, but there is. Oh my gosh. And Madsen had exactly enough Ooh. mana for it. And Pete's gonna daze it. Oh he my has the daze. Is that gonna work? And it's gone. No that, more back to basics in the deck. That daze has been in his hand the whole game because of that Teferi. The old turn 20 days. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo. And we have a game again. What a world. Thoughts he's from Pete. He still has run in six in play. Takes Narset. Just ponder, brainstorm, supreme verdict are left. And Pete can start going to work now with these wastelands. He will shoot down all of Timothy's non-basics. The one tundra. <laughs> is it just one? It's not yeah. just one, it is, is it? It is one tundra. Well, that one's dead a lot oh, of ways. It, it is, is wasted. D-O-A. <laughs> Many times over. Brainstorm from Madsen. And Spell Pierce now is converted. And Pete will untap. Well, it's still just one land a turn. Winter Orb is still in play. Finds a Scalding Tarn. Six dual lands in play. So he has two left in the deck. Depending on how many duels that Ingram has left, there's a play I might like to see from him where he untaps a Wasteland and Wastelands himself right. to have two lands in Graveyard for Renin Six in order to generate extra untaps through this Winter Orb. Ponder from Madsen. Remember, he needs to find a way to win this game. Finds two more Ponders and a Force of Will. That's just not, it's not going to do it in time. No, if there wasn't a Winter Orb in play, you probably would keep those because mana is not a concern, but mana is. Exactly. Flooded Strand from Madsen. And if we get to the point with a Ren Emblem where cards have retrace, it is possible that Ingram can actually just win from here. Maybe find something like a Lightning Bolt. If he yeah. has one in his deck, he just retraces it a bunch of times. See, both Matt, Pete Ingram continues to untap lands here with Winter Orb. Here's Leovold. Ren and Six moves up again does not want to play Leovold either. Nope, big show of patience here. Just wants to hold up mana for responses to protect this Ren and Six. More mana for both players. Three minutes remain in the round. And remember, Timothy needs a win here. Ren and Six up to, well, he's gonna Thought Seize. 
And he's doing that because this is the turn where he can try to make an emblem. Well, next turn. He's protecting for next turn's emblem. And the big thing here is it's going to knock the Snapcaster out. So Snapcaster, Terminus, Supreme Verdict, Spell Pierce, and Jace. This takes care of the Snapcaster. He could also take Jace. Even if Novitz had flashed in the Snapcaster, that just gives Renin Six the opportunity to shoot it down. Right. Pete had made sure he had not used the run and six before casting this thought seize. Right, exactly. And this is that spot where Ingram does not need to win. He right. just needs he to not lose for two minutes. And honestly, I think if this is an untimed round, he might even be able to win from here. Exactly. That was not the case a while ago, but Pete has mounted a comeback. He's thinking about Leovold. I like this. It's a trade of mana. If he makes Leovold, then Timothy would have to make Jace. Bounce Leovold. You know, Jace was taken to be Snapcaster Mage. So the thing here that Leovold does is it puts Madsen in a spot where he can't Snapcaster or something like Ponder, and he's right. priced into trying to do something like exactly. But the draw for Madsen was Blue Elemental Blast. The turn run in six oh is at seven gosh. loyalty. So it stops the Planeswalker, but time is ticking. This is a great draw for Madsen. Right. You know, he does not literally lose the game, and that does have that has a bunch of value. Blue Blast shoots down the Planeswalker. The card drawn off Leovold. Gosh, I guess Renin Six is going to have to settle for drawing five cards for two mana. And now some attacks in for Pete. Got, he has Timothy down to ten. Passes again. Does not want to overcommit to the board. says go. Don't know that that fetch line has targets left. It may not. You know, we see Madsen found a copy of Council's Judgment here. If he gets to untap another land, that can clear up this winter orb and maybe help him mount something, but with the amount of time left on the clock, it's this is probably yeah. it. Yeah, he's in, we'll see how quickly he can go for that play. Here's Council's Judgment. It's going to resolve. It'll take care of, I believe that they vote, so I don't believe this targets. It so. does not. So no card draw for Pete. And Madsen is going to be turn zero. And that's going to do it. Uh, Madsen mounting a, com Ma you know, getting his way back into this with the blue blast, followed up by Council's Judgment. So theoretically, if he rips a Terminus to mop up all the creatures Ingram's about to play, and then has a cantrip to find a Monastery Mentor, and then casts enough spells on turn two of turns, right. enough cantrips into cantrips and so on, It's it, he is not 0% to win this game. Okay. Is what I'm getting at. We're at turn one. See that turn marker on the top? <laughs> Brainstorm here. Pete's hand is all creatures. So a lot of this is out of his control. Makes Delver of Secrets turn two for Timothy Madsen. This is nice from Ingram, holding back the other creatures in his right. hand. So land was the draw. Ponder from Madsen. Needs the mentor. Narset, swords, swords. That was four that cards. Four? That was four cards. He's going to call a judge. Oh, and the fourth card is the monastery. Yeah, player. that's unfortunately, that's unlikely to be. We'll see how the judge wants to resolve this. So, There's also a this, Leovold in play. Well, you can still look at the top you three. Can. You can. Absolutely. You can stack them, and then Ingram gets to draw a card. And you, you don't draw a card. Is it? Yeah, you just can't draw the card. You look right, at the right, top right, right. three, and then you may shuffle. The end. Now, in this case, Timothy has looked at the top four, so the, the, the judge is going to deal with this on, and decide, you know, he didn't decide what the resolution is here. Right. More than likely, this is just going to be a hidden card error. Yeah, there will be a, some, a warning will be 
we will let you know on the ruling on it. Likely a warning will be given, and then the judge will decide the best way to, main, to fix the game state. And it seems like Pete is going to be given the option of which of those cards is not in the top three. And Pete says, I would not. I would like Monastery Mentor to not be in the top three. Correct. That is the way that Madsen stumbles into a win here. Right. And that is all that Ingram is trying to so, avoid. Now that Mentor is not in the top three, the judge is going to have to restore the deck to where it, how it should be. And because there's no known information in the deck, it's likely the judge will just say, shuffle this card in. So it's a hidden card error. And generally when you do something of looking at extra cards, the rules are now that it's going to your opponent then gets to pick, so it never ends up in your advantage. That's why we saw four cards here. Timothy got to his opponent picked which one had to go back in the deck, and now Timothy can rearrange the top three, choose to shuffle or not shuffle, and then not draw a card. Right, and this is for something like a brainstorm possibly on Ingram's turn in order to not literally yeah. lose. A brainstorm would be far worse because in a brainstorm you would then still have to put two cards back after Leovold. Well, there's that Supreme Verdict. There we go. So that cleans up the board. But this is turn two. Timothy needs to win. I don't see how it happens anymore, unfortunately. Wasteland takes care of a duel. Wasteland takes care of a duel. Turn three. Just a boatload of creatures for Pete. He'll put them onto the battlefield. Here's one Tarmogoyf. Let's make it two Tarmogoyfs. Or Tarmogoyf and a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Pass turn four. Mike Timothy Madsen's last turn. He'd have to deal 14. I don't see how he does it. Uh, Needs a Banefire. No, that one doesn't even work. <laughs> Isn't there one that if X is big enough, oh, it doubles it? doubles it, it. yeah. yeah. Um, it's one of those red X oh, cards so that just a does a lot. Oh, it's Tydra, though. Oh. That's what Dang it, it is. That's, it needs to be a burn spell. That's, that's not it. Terminus. Boom. Bottom of the deck. But that's going to be Timothy's last turn. So Pete Ingram is your match winner here on Legacy. And the team of Ingram, Sarani, and Bowmeister will... Lock their spot in day two at the top of the standings. They are 7 and 0. Oh. Uh, such strong players locking it up for day two at the first possible moment. Yeah, and a okay. really good lineup. Uh, what I like about them, especially, Jun Dinosaurs has just been a great metagame cult.